Now, this uh, series of videos is going to be about grip sizing. This is what your nine stance widths look like. Uh, they were emailed to you after being measured. Uh, everyone is different. Um, when they do the, uh, when they get their stance widths, so as long as you have your nine stance widths, if you're a member on the Right Balance site and you've been measured, you have it. If you're certified, this is really. If you have your nine stance widths, you'll be able to figure out your grip size following what we're going to do. Uh, so one of the first things you're going to need is, I'd get a pool cue because we're going to use the pool cue to determine the handle size on your grip. If you looked at my carrying angle, my external shoulder rotation, it is 151-152. That's really in a mid-core region, so I'm stuck. I'm on a bubble here, and your student, you're going to find a lot of your students on that bubble, but we know, now know how to biomechanically engineer uh, to move your student into their ideal uh, uh, external shoulder rotation that gives them maximum power and maximum efficiency. A lot of this has to do with ground uses as well. So let's go to how am I going to fit my lower core. And one, which is where I am pretty darn square. Now I'm going to grip this at the bottom and look where my hips go. Before I started supporting this to the side, absolutely square. All I have to do now, I'm on one, lower core. All I have to do is grip it with the wrong grip size and all of a sudden I, I go wide open. So this grip is too small. I'm going to go a little bit higher, slowly, and as I do, you'll notice my hips will start to square up. You want to do this two or three times. I've done this several thousand times, so uh, this is just as a point of illustration. And I have arrived at a point here on one where it looks pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this chalk, You'll notice where I've gripped this, uh, where my middle finger, middle finger, grip size is about middle finger. This is not something we've disclosed before. When you use that um, card to measure your fingers, I'm just marking this with a piece of chalk. And that piece of chalk, what I'm going to do now is go back. I'm going to go back to one once I've marked it with a chalk, because I want to double check here. And this should fit every one of my low core stance widths, one, two, and three. So I'm going to go to one, I'm going to make sure I seat that, that uh, cue stick on, I seat that chalk mark, middle finger, I go to one, and there it is. So I'm going to go to three, there it is, I'm good, three. I can add knee flex, see how square I am. Now I'm going to go to two, add knee flex, I'm good. Now. One, two, and three, I'm good, which is where I should be good. Now I'm going to go to six, two inches to the left, and look where I go. My hips rotate. This grip size only fits my lower core. Now I'm going to take the calipers. Uh, these calipers measure, you, know, you want to move it to inches. It'll measure millimeters or inches. You want inches because grip sizing is measured in inches. One mil is one one thousandth of an inch. So we're measuring not millimeters, but mils. So we go, we measure the, this point, 10.65. 10.65 is what I get. So that's, let's, that's my bottom level. Let's see uh, how big I can go and still stay square. And when you're doing this, don't take the first measurement, because uh, it very well could be off. And you're going to do it very slowly as you move up. You can see here, I'm below that yellow or that mark. Still below. Starting to move on on the chalk mark now. My hips just squared on the chalk mark again. So I'm good. I'll go to three. I go to two, and I'm good. So if I go to nine, I open. Now let's see how high I can go. Go back to one and get square here. Now I'm going to slide up slowly. I'm still good here. And now I started to rotate. So 
I'm going to go back down. Now this is an important concept as we get here. So I've got another chalk mark. So I'm going to have two chalk marks on here. This is going to give me my range. And this is just for instruction here today. But this, this, see the space between these two chalk marks? If I were to go to our old model where I had my lower core stance with setup, this would be the range I have to go. And I'm going to measure this top mark now. The bottom one's uh, 10.65, which is exactly what I've always gotten when I measured with the cards. And when we did the original study in early 2000s, we used cards as our measurement there as well. And I can go as high as 1090. So 1065 uh, to 1090, uh, we've always said you have about 25 thousandths uh, range. So right now, that is my range. Um, so for lower core, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the express exercise. And I'm going to do it um, using this stick here. I'm going to grip it here and here. And I'm going to go through, see which end is going to be easier, this side. So I'm going to I put my middle finger between those two marks. And I'm going to do my nine, my, my express exercise in these nine stands. So be careful how you grip this. 10 finger grip, held vertical, that's one, and I'm going to go through this rather quickly, and three, and I'll edit this so you have to watch all of this, but Still have my chalk marks. Let me redo them here. These are the two lines that I did the express in the middle of these two. But I want you to notice something. I had 25 thousandths between these two when I tested, and I was testing from the tapered up. So let's go back. Now to the bottom chalk mark, which squared my hips on one, and I'm squared. Okay. The other thing that you'll find interesting now, no matter where I go, this is mid core, I'm squared. And when I add knee flex, my weight is over the center of my arches, which is where you want your low core player to be able to turn through. So I am absolutely squared, no matter where I go. So. As you've heard in the other video, stance width, once you do the express, stance width is done. You don't have to lay out upper, middle, or lower core stance width from which to play. You can play from anywhere, but grip size is really the key because it's going to change yield to toe balance. So here I am on one, that's two. These are core regions as I go through, that's three. Knee flex, that's my lower core. Here I am on four, still square. And my weight distribution doesn't change. Uh, if I want to test this in a, well, let me, let me uh, finish here and show you something else. So I'm square. The higher I go, you'll notice something just happened. I can't get too big on this grip size now. I cannot. I'm going to be square. I'm on four and I'm still square. I go to nine, I'm still square. I go to one. Now what is happening, I don't know if you noticed, my weight just went more toward my heels. So you can engineer for your student. Once you have the foundation of the low core, you can't go too big. And as you're going to see in the upper core, it's the same thing. Once we have the foundation in the upper core, we can't go too small. If I go smaller now, here's my chalk mark right here. Okay, that was these two lines. This was the smallest I could go for lower core. That was the biggest. 
Now after the express, I can't go too big. Let's see how far down I can go with the low core now. Please test this on your own. And you're going to be able to go through the core regions when you test it. Not just your dominant core. You can see when I grip this in my right hand where my hips just went. So I'm going to go here and my hips squared up. But I can go anywhere once again. That's the smallest. I'm going to go just below that number and my hips open. So what you found uh, when you're testing this is this is the minimum of the lower core grip size for me. It's all relative to hand size. You may find somebody in low core down here because they have very short fingers. Finger length is the primary measurement, by the way. So, and you ask about, uh, we're going to get to the putter. Uh, putter falls into the same, same realm here, as you'll see. If I grip this like a putter, I can't go too big. I go all the way down, middle fingers here, I go below that, and my hips rotate. So, your grip size with the putter, the thing to remember with the putter is, you go back on the heels, you're going to get a bigger arc. You can try it, you'll just feel a bigger arc. And you obviously are going to be over the center of the arches, so the putter can be fit, and it will change path with the putter. We have a lot more to show you with regard to putter, but just so you'll understand, when you're fitting the uh, grip size after the express, putter is going to be the same size ideally as your um, uh, iron size. And I would maintain that continuity because it's going to change your to toe balance exactly the same way. So that's how you're going to do low core. So now what I'm going to do, let me back up here, I can go to any stance with B squared. Remember how much external shoulder rotation I had before. After the express, I now, let me show you face on, after the express, low core, I have a greater carry angle, I have greater external shoulder rotation. Remember I could only get to this hip? Now I'm able to get the, I'm able to set. Look at the under delivery I'm able to create. So the express tie brings everything together. It, it changed your heel to toe balance. And recall when I did my uh, uh, express, I used between these two lines. I didn't go, you can go very large and you can get a greater carrying angle as you'll learn. Uh, you'll get a greater external shoulder rotation. And we talk about that uh, in, with baseball. Here is, here is my grip size that fits my lower core. And so if I go into a 10 finger grip, and when you test this, the best way to go, you'll notice where my weight is, heel to toe. I am really right over the center of the arches, and this is my, I, I feel like I could probably use a little bigger grip to get really over the center of my arches, but from here I can clear. I couldn't clear before uh, because the, my external shoulder rotation didn't allow me to get under. And I thought it was more related to getting a bigger grip to get further back. No, it's the external, these things all work together. And you're going to find that everything you've learned in right balance, uh, stance with external shoulder rotation, Power spots now, my power spot in this grip has to be out on that finger to create power at the top. Uh, the greater the carrying angle, the greater the shaft lean. The more back that ball position is going to be. So all of these things are simple to figure out. Once you, if you understand the foundation of right balance, you'll understand all of this and how to fit grip size. And I want to say this again, we have um, my balance professional, Matthew Paradis, in Quebec, Canada, Quebec City. Uh, Matthew is a golf coach. He's an athlete. He's played all sports. He's helping us test the exercise program we call Core Right Balance Core 360. Matthew talks about playing golf in the morning, having the grip size that he wants to play with that puts him in his, I forget what core region, I think upper puts him in his core region for balance and performance. He plays with that, comes back, has lunch, goes to play squash. Then he will do his express exercises in the nine stance widths with his squash racket. Now that racket handle fits him, and it's bigger. 
more you do the express, the more in, with a larger grip size, if you're trying to get greater external shoulder rotation, you'll see changes in degrees over time. But if I were pitching still, and I'm 157, I want to throw at 155 for quite a while. Then I want to throw at 153. Then I want to throw at 150, 150, until over time, I know, make sure I'm, I'm conditioning in between that I have the strength in that shoulder girdle to be able to support the, the yeah, engineered biomechanical changes I've made. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of understanding training, conditioning, injury prevention. I can tell you at the age of 20, I came to Southern California to play winter league with the Angels. <clears throat> at the age of 20, this is before steroids, but you talk to any athlete, and they think they can get an edge, they'll take it. They'll take that edge, well, you, we've seen it in the steroid use in Major League, in FL, every, you, everywhere you go, athletes are really working to get bigger, get stronger. Uh, if you would have told me I can take it from 157 to 140, I'd have done it. Without consideration of, am I going to injure my shoulder? Uh, my consideration would, be, would have been increase in velocity. And you have to have patience as you go through this, patience in the training and the development of, um, of strength in whatever. You want to do bilateral strengthening too. You don't want to just strengthen one side. Because you're going to have that same external shoulder rotation. Should have on both sides. They're going to be equal. Uh, when you finish the express, no matter where you are, your arms and hands are going to hang the same. No matter what stance when you do it. If you look at my hands here, if you look at my hands here, they're the same. So we'll see you again. Uh, next video, we're going to be covering mid-core.